welcome to the New Rugged Order Podcast, exclusively on the Hard Knock Digital Culture Channel. Now give it up to your host people, MM2K. What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, people? I always screw that up because I'm not supposed to fade right then and there, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I always mess it up. I need technical help, y'all. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, MM2K, back again with another NRO podcast on the Hard Knock Digital Culture. Um, we're being per- uh, persistent and consistent with it, baby. You know what I'm saying? I know we had our, our doubters, you know, but we got to do it for the fans. We got to do it, and I hate using that word, but we got to do it for the fans and we got to do it for the subscribers. You know what I'm saying? We got people that are plugged in, that, that that are invested in this. They got blood, sweat, and tears in this, man. So we got to come better. In 2020, we definitely will do that across the board. So many projects on the horizon, so many things to get into, and so many things to suck up my time. And that's why I enjoy doing these with you guys every week. All right. So if y'all could do me a huge favor as well, tweet this out, let everybody know that we are live. I'm doing that also right now. Oh, uh, let's take a look here. Let's take a look here. Let's take a look here. Did, well, hold on. Uh, oh, some interesting stuff here by the homie um, Ahmad, uh, Daniel Ahmad. Let me put it over here on the screen so we can take a look at it real quick. Boom. And then we're going to do something like this. Ba-ba! Okay, Daniel Ahmad says... Let's go over here while we're getting everybody to fill in. Homie did. Oh, 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 that's a little too much. The cataracts ain't that big. He says, here's a look at Ubisoft's release slate date between January 20th and March 2020. Plan for release year, uh, uh, release year four of honor episode three, the division two year five, uh, rainbow six, uh, siege adventure one, of Breakpoint, as well as Stadia's release of The Division 2 and The Crew. So, yeah, man. I mean, this is great. This is a great segue um, into what I want to talk about, which is game slates for 2020. You know what I'm saying? Like, the first half of 2020 looks to be abysmal in a lot of ways. And... um. We're hoping that that gets, you know, that I, w- gamers are questioning, what am I going to do? Like, what am I going to do? What what am I going to be able to play in lieu of all my favorite titles either being pushed back or or they just are non-existent? You know what I'm saying? Um, what is this? Why is this thing up here on my screen for Borderlands 2? Borderlands 2, get out of here, man. Get out of here. Got you. Got you. Let's get rid of you. Let's get rid of you. All right. Um. So, yeah. Unfortunately, that's where we're at right now, as it relates to uh, yo, Hosey. What's up, homie? That's where we're at right now, as it relates to games and and things like that. Man, very very sad, <laughs> very sombering time. If you are a gamer. All right. So here's what I want to do. Um, I think I tweeted this out to everybody and there is one more group that I wanted to tweet this out to if I can give, if you guys can bear with me, please. Um, but I want to put this, I want to tag that here because that's perfect for me to ramble about too. That's just sad, man. (laughs) That's sad, man. Oh, come on. Come on. Don't do that. Don't do that. <sighs> Jeez. Dang, Daniel, why you had to, to to scour my hopes and dreams like that or, or rain on my parade like that? All right. So I wanted to do this real quick because I don't want this thing hickling up and going all over the place. Let me minus this. This, this, this is all the, the crap I got to go through just to make the show happen, y'all. See, we are live. Copy this, make sure that everybody is aware that we are live. And then here, and come on, retweet, please. Okay, and boom. All right, we are where we need to be. We are in a good space. I can close that out. And then I could bring this back up. 
which has a lot of feature stuff that I want to share with you guys. And let's get into it. Uh, Pyramatic says, is the Division 2 going to be cross-play at all? Or cro- I, I, all I want to know. I, I, I got you, brother, and I would love for it to be either cross-platform or cross Say, cross say something, man, because me personally, this will make it the fourth platform that I have it for. And I've had to do four different playthroughs. And I don't like that, man. I don't like, I mean, I like to have it as an option if I want to do that, but I don't like that. Like for instance, um, I originally got it for Xbox and I got it for PC. And then, um, I got it for PlayStation and then I up my PC service to Uplay Plus, and then now I'm gonna get it for Stadia again. You know what I'm saying? Like, and the thing that's killing me about Stadia, don't worry, this is not gonna be a Stadia, the, the Stadia podcast, nor is it gonna be an RIP Stadia podcast. But the thing that uh, irks me is I'm trying to figure out when Uplay Plus is coming. So apparently, Uplay Plus is nowhere around the horizon because if it was, then we wouldn't see the Division Two standalone, and that's what's upset me. I'm really, I'm, I'm upset about that. I'm not even going to lie. So, um, I don't know, I don't know what's going on here. I know Ubisoft, because of the reaction to Ghost Recon, they kind of like reshuffled everything, threw all the cards up in the air, and they're trying to deal with that aftermath, but it's really sucking, um, because there was key integration, key games that is messing with my 2020 and um, it's screwing up Stadia, you know, Stadia was relying on Doom, you know, for it being a very young platform in its infancy stage, it was relying on Doom to hold over the angst for games. Doom is gone. You know what I'm saying? Cause they got pushed back into March and it's not going to be there in January. And then you play plus was supposed to be available, but it looks like, that Ubisoft went back to the drawing board and it may have cut back on time that they were going to spend with that. So, you know, who knows what's going on, man? Let's do this. Uh, cause I need to spread this out. I need to spread my wings. Got over a little bit. No. Okay. Before we get started, I want to show you guys just to go over, uh, uh, damn. Go over a few quick things before we get started with the subject matters at hand. First and foremost, I want to remind everybody, Hard Knock Digital Culture is now a Broadband Bullies product. And even though it's not showing me here like it's supposed to, (laughs) it's supposed to show me here, but we'll work with our website people to get that fixed. Um, You can go to the Broadband Bully website and then like how it shows Z streams, it should show me live as well. Um, we got a lot of great articles, like for instance, um, let's see here. We're now leading with, uh, Rod Ferguson leaves the coalition. You know what I'm saying? And we got all the major articles, Phil Spencer viewing Google, a lot of great stuff to look over and to read over. So you definitely want to go to the broadband bullies website and check that out. All right. In addition to that, um, I want to also let you guys know about something called Super Saturday that I'm participating in um, via the Stadia dosage platform. Um, Me and a bunch of other uh, content creators you see here are going to collaborate together and and on behalf of Stadia Gaming, present 24 hours of Stadia game streaming, whether it be, uh, albeit be, uh, you know, via podcasts, you know, via, via uh, streaming a game, whatever, whatever the case may be. So you, these are all the participants right now. And, uh, I will, I will be there as well on behalf of Stadia dosage. And, um, I'm going to be streaming a couple hours of, uh, some Stadia games right now. I think it's going to be Borderlands three, but it might be, I might change my mind. It really depends. We got that new content for ghost recon breakpoint. I'm very interested in that. So I'm going to dig into that a little bit today after this, and I'm going to stream that. And then we're going to see where that goes. Right. So if everything works well, if everything goes well, um, you know, we'll, we'll be there two straight hours from 9 AM to 11 AM Eastern standard time. Check us out. It's going to be a great, great event. And then from what I understand, don't quote me if I'm wrong, but from what I understand, there's going to be prizes given out too. So you definitely want to go to here. I'm going to leave the link here in the comment section. 
you definitely want to go here and uh, leave something and, and check it out and, and get all the information that you need there. Um, and and Plyromatic says, at least with PC, as far as divot. Yeah, I'm with you, brother. I'm with you. I'm I'm hella fired, disappointed. I'm, I'm angry. I'm upset um, in regards to this whole Uplay plus integration um, with Stadia. Um, I am because before I was a true believer of Stadia, that was, I was like, okay, if I do get this thing and to test it out for the public, I'm going to get it to test it out for the public so I can play my, you play games on the go. Um, I said, because NVIDIA GeForce from what I had experienced at the time wasn't stable enough. Um, wasn't that great out of network. You know what I'm saying? When you were in, I mean, it was good out of network cause it's strictly cloud. What, what I'm trying to say is, as a pure travel system, it wasn't always the best. Like in the more challenging um, networks, it didn't work too well. You know what I'm saying? Where Stadia does, you know? Um, and so I was like, okay, I'm going to use Stadia for my my travel gaming, particularly on my Uplay Plus games. I'm paying $16 a month. So I was hoping that I would merge over, even if it wasn't a bundle deal, even if you just had to pay the full 60, I don't care. I just wanted to play my games on the go with the, with, with, with the portability of Stadia and, and the, uh, the, the great library of Uplay Plus. And I don't know what's going on. So now I got to rely on my Uplay Plus subscription through NVIDIA GeForce. And see, that's a problem for Stadia. They, they got to get that portion together because by me relying on that, and being that I'm the top tier member, because it's free for 90 days, I can enjoy my Uplay Plus games as long as they're supported on GeForce uh, now. I can, I can use that instead. Again, not the greatest travel system, but if they improve on it, it's going to be a problem for Stadia. So they, you know, so they got to do some things sooner rather than later. Okay, so I wanted to get you guys aware of those two events. Now that we talked about those, let's get into the nitty gritty of today's show. All right, so uh, first and foremost, we got Rob Ferguson leaving, man. Well, no, 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 no. We're going to hold off on that. We're going to hold off on that. And I want to talk about these numbers. That's what I want to do first. I want to talk about these numbers because here's what's happened. Let me go here. Here's what happened. Xbox reported numbers and the numbers... They were in double digits as far as dips. We expected that, but the dip wasn't as severe as we thought it would be in comparison to PlayStation. Actually, PlayStation's total dip in gaming revenue altogether was 20%. Microsoft's was only 21%. Meaning that they were only, you know, as far as margins are concerned, they're only 1% behind. That's not bad. Actually, that proves, um, because I think they were down way more than that, that Sony, you know, had had a more of a, a, a downtrod quarter um, than Microsoft did in reg- when you compare their performance last quarter. Like last quarter, I believe the numbers were worse for Microsoft, but they were far better for PlayStation. So it just shows that more of a downward trend rather for PlayStation. But if you didn't see these numbers, you would think it was the opposite. You would think it was the reverse, okay? So let me just read you like a couple of articles here. I wanna talk about the numbers. I wanna talk about the presentation of the numbers and what the perception is, and I'm going to talk about what this means for the strategy of Xbox going forward, because this tells a lot. And I hope what we did via yesterday, excuse me, not just yesterday. I hope what we did via the last several weeks of gaming news is that we've realized that we can't be stuck in our silos. Like we got to do a little bit of due diligence. You can't just be listening to the, the nice crispy voice that sounds so good on the Yeti, but doesn't know what the hell he's talking about or she's talking about. We can't just fall for that anymore. We've been doing this for too long. We're too smart for this. Okay. 
The gaming community is of the smartest and brightest consumers out there, but we just have a habit of falling into dumb practices. I don't understand why I don't get it. I'm being new to this YouTube. I still consider myself fairly new. Just getting into this culture within the last two years. I don't understand it. I, I try to apply some of my life to, you know, my day-to-day -day practices here. And so I try not to do stupid stuff here like I would do in real life. But for some reason, all that gets thrown out of the window. All the, the, the professional leaps and stuff that you guys make in your real life, when it comes to this console stuff, y'all throw that away, throw, toss it out the window, put it in a garbage disposal, and then y'all just become straight dummies. <laughs> and I don't get it. Because this is a passion hobby of mine. I love it. So anything that I love or that I, I adore, which has been part of my life for over 30 years, I want to know more about. I don't just, I don't want to just bloviate and get on the mic and start talking a bunch of bibble babble that makes no sense or is connected to nothing in reality. Why do that? To create some superficial bubble for myself? I can go read a damn book. I can do reading rainbow. It's in a book. <laughs> Take a look. I can do some damn reading rainbow stuff. Why would I do it here? On my passion. I, I don't get that. But anyway, so we got to get in the know. And hopefully the last several weeks have helped us understand why we got to get in the know, particularly with Phil coming out and saying, look, y'all, let me keep it real with you. You see them Nintendo and them Sony cats over there? I ain't worried about them, man. Whether, whether he should be or not, I'm not worried about them. I want that cloud. I want that cloud cash. I'm on the cloud cash. <laughs> and these cats can't get the cloud cash. Don't get me wrong, they got a lot, they got a lot of cash with them. But I want the I want them bitcoins. I don't I don't want I don't want greenbacks. I want bitcoins. Them Amazon and them Google cats, they try to stockpile on that Bitcoin. I'm going after them. That's basically what it is. Is that he's he wants money that Phil Spencer and company wants money that has long reaching ramifications as far as looking into gaming beyond 2020, beyond 2021, beyond 2022, because gaming by 2025 is estimated to be a $300 billion industry annually. Okay. And it reaches that 300 billion, not by keeping the same amount of gamers that we have now on consoles, it means that by 2025, they're expecting it to have wide reach, particularly because of cloud gaming, mobile gaming, a lot of stuff. And that and, and Google and Amazon are strategizing themselves to be in position to, to take a full advantage of that. And Microsoft wants to be there as well. OK, hopefully we understand that now instead of denying it. Microsoft is thinking about Google. Because Google had a bad launch. <laughs> like Google's like, you know what? There's $300 billion left on the table. Let's leave it there and just work on email applications. That's what got us to be in the number one company in the world. No. Get out of la la land. Get rooted in fact and factuality. They're not going to do that. The launch was bumbled. The launch was mishandled. But it's not they're, they're, this is not a startup company. This isn't Joe Bob Briggs hamburger shop. You know what I'm saying? And oh, we missed a, 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 a shipment of hamburger patties. So now we got to close our doors and file chapter 11. No, no. They bungled the launch. They don't have the games right now because they feel like they, don't, they ain't got to. They're going to do the bare minimum. This is a Fortune 500 company. And even though I love the platform, I don't trust no company. They're going to give you the bare minimum. As long as the people don't, don't speak out. Now that the people are speaking out, now, from what I understand, they, they you know, scrambling behind the scene. Well, they've been scrambling because they had to show and prove uh, during Christmas, and they've had to show and prove uh, with announcements. So now they realize with the advent of NVIDIA GeForce and um, a lot of angst about games, now they got to do it again. But if nobody said anything, they would just provide the bare minimum. That's any Fortune 500 company. It's all about expenses. And, 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 and revenue in the black. So that so we're their only motivator to keep it churning, keep it churning. You know what I'm saying? So don't mistake 
the bare minimalist and the, the, the early access nature of this launch, like Google's going to, don't listen to the people that want clicks, the people that go and pay GoDaddy.com for a website for $20 and, and, and create stupid sites like Google Graveyard so y'all can get clicks and give them AdSense money. Don't, don't, don't fall into that bubble. Do not fall into that silly bubble. Understand how the market works, what drives people to do things in the market, and why a lot of these numbers and stuff is important. I don't see it as pocket watching. I think that's silly. That's that is viability watching. That's what it is. You want to see the viability of something that you're investing into, especially now that you're running into scenarios where you don't own the product. See, we don't own these games anymore. Over the last, you know, over a long time, we've just had access to that to the licenses. And more and more, that access to that license for that game is separating us more and more from the control that we have over the product. See, don't mix up the words ownership and control. They're not always synonymous. We haven't owned these games for a long time since the advent of the internet. We, we have... We own the license, which the license is not, you know, it ain't forever. Licenses can be what? Temporary. Okay. So because licenses can be temporary, you know, before it didn't mean much because even if they wanted to suspend our license, as long as we went offline, we still had the onus of control. Okay. But now that even single player games, whether you get online or not, now that those games require DRM as well, you still don't own the game, you own the license, but now you're losing more what? Control, okay? So in the advent of you losing control, because you never had clear cut ownership, you just own the license. On the realm of you losing control, you better look into this stuff. You better look at the viability of these companies. You better care about what the, what the year over year percentages is. Because if they're bound to close their door, guess what you lose full access to? Control. Okay. Trust me, I'm, I'm concerned about it just as much as you are. If I make hundreds and hundreds of thousands and thousands of dollars in, in investments into an ecosystem, I'm not going to do it just to cap for the ecosystem. I'm doing it based off the viability that despite I may be losing control, how viable is this entity? Now, y'all can fight the control as much as you want to, but the market drives everything. And unless you own st stocks in this company or you refuse to purchase their products, then that control will slip. It's important for everybody to understand that. Let me go to the chat. Um, Dig Sample Beats, what's up? Says Love Stadia. He said, my new console Tesla. Absolutely. I love Stadia. I love what it's about. Um, I'm going to talk about this tomorrow on Stadia uh, Dosage, the, the podcast, this Stadia Stream Connect podcast, but I have tried NVIDIA Geoforce. It's cool in a lot of ways. It works best via the client. That's when you're playing it through the client, that's when you get its best performance. I don't think that the client is as consistent and as dependable as the CCU, the client looks better um, than, than the Stadia CCU, meaning the Stadia, uh, uh oh, we just got somebody, I believe that follow. Thank you, Lex Over, for following. I appreciate it, brother. I pray, uh, uh. Um, so yeah, I, I don't think that, um, I don't think the PC client looks better than Stadia on a web browser on games that work like Destiny 2. Whoa, <laughs> like, whoa, like all these people made sure that they put the most effort in Destiny 2. Um, 
xCloud, even though it still leagues away from Stadia, and I we talked about this um, prior. Even xCloud, xCloud's best performing game is Destiny 2. It's his best performing game and it's his best looking game. And clearly, NVIDIA's best looking game and best performing game is Destiny 2 as well. Destiny 2 on NVIDIA's Geoforce's, um, what do you call that? Um, their client looks better than Stadia on the CCU and Stadia on um, the web browser. So if you get it on the client, it's going to look better and it performs hella well too. I would say, honestly, to be honest with you, if you have a, but here's the, here's the caveat though. If you have a super powerful machine, then it's going to perform best on the C, I mean, on the NVIDIA client. If you crank everything up on the GeForce Now client. But then somebody's listening to this and they're saying, but if you do that in M2K, then you might, you might as well run it natively. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I can tell you right now that on cheaper hardware, you can't crank that thing all the way up and it's nowhere going to look as good. I have a $1,300 PC with a 2070 card in it. So that's why it looks better. It has slightly, but it's slightly better textures. I could just boot it up natively and 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 save my 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 five dollars a month or what I believe is going to be fifteen dollars a month. But we'll talk about that later. But with all that being said, you're losing control of these games, okay? So therefore, you better understand the viability of all this. All right. So here's what what's going on. Microsoft dipped by twenty one percent, but its console sales dipped by forty two percent. I don't think that's a big deal. I don't think it's a big deal. Because they, you could play Xbox anywhere. That's their strategy. They would love for they would love for their percentage margins to be comparable to Sony's, and it be a hundred percent dip in console sales. Honestly, because it's all about the software at the end of the day. So, why doesn't it feel this way? Why doesn't it feel like Microsoft made some huge gains from quarter to quarter? Tell you one reason why. One big reason why. Can anybody guess? Can anybody guess what the reason is why uh, Microsoft, it just doesn't feel that way for Xbox? One name. Phil. Phil Spencer. Phil Spencer is the reason that Xbox... As they said, play, play room matrix said Game Pass. No, Game Pass is actually, and here's one thing I'm, I'm going to say about that. Uh, Game Pass is actually the reason why that Xbox was able to uh, offset some of its losses in the console. And even though they're giving it away for a dollar, there's a lot of people that are, that, that, are paying to re-up. Not everybody took advantage of that deal. Not everybody is new. They're getting $14 a month or what is it, $44 a quarter? They're getting that money from people right now. Now there's a lot of deals out there, like you can get the three month subscription, half the price and all. There's a lot of deals out there. Go to CD Keys. Um, and I'm, and yeah, and I'm talking ultimate game pass rather, but there's a lot of people that are paying the 1499 a month or the 999 a month as they allude to in the chat. So, and they're, and, and they've doubled their subscription. Um, so I would say that there might be over 10 million people that have Game Pass right now, whether it be Game Pass or Game Pass Ultimate, some form of Game Pass. 
and then in with G Game Pass, that automatically attributes to the live services. That's why Satya Nadella mentioned that live had went up It's in, in, in all-time highs. So if live is going up in all-time highs, and we know there's only about 50 million consoles out there, there are a significant amount of people that don't own an Xbox console that have signed up for Game Pass. Because how in the world is Xbox Live higher than what it was before when, at, when the three, during the 360 era, they were at 86 million? How was it higher than then? Because of Game Pass. Because of Game Pass. So, I don't, I don't think people understand that Microsoft is making inroads in regards to its goals. That it, 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 it did, it, you know, it is doing well for the company. That Game Pass is not a failure. But what I won't say is that Game Pass is the ultimate success right now. It's not. I think the sweet spot, the spot where Microsoft can reasonably look past Sony and Nintendo and say, okay, now we're up here with the big boys with Google and Amazon. Like we ain't even think about these mugs totally besides just saying it is when Game Pass gets to 30 million. I think they're probably at 10, 11, maybe 12 million at most. But when they hit 30 million, and then they pull that lever and say, okay, you ain't getting this thing for a dollar no more, but we got, and if they can have day one games out there, then they are going to kill it. Okay. They are going to kill it. They're going to have, they're going to leave their mark. So understand that. I don't, hey, look. And this is coming from somebody that is not a fan of Xbox products right now. But you, you got to understand how this stuff works so you're not shocked. So when you see stuff like MLB going multi-plat, Jim Ryan putting stuff on PC, you're not shocked why. This market stuff matters. Okay? Now, with that being said, the person that I, the name that I was edging for y'all was Phil. Phil Spence is the reason why that it doesn't seem that way. How is it Phil Spencer's fault? Because Phil don't know when to shut the hell up. He don't. Prime example. Look at 2019. 2019 in regards to this record-breaking generation for Sony was so abysmal. It was very abysmal. They hardly had any wins anywhere. Days gone disappointed as far as critical acclaim. They had to bow out of E3 where people were laughing. Like, what's going on? Like, are y'all back to selling the sushi out of the back of the refrigerator days and the lampshade? What's, what's going on? Y'all ain't even doing fan events. Like, what's going on? And then... You fast forward to the flop and flip it and flop, flop, flip it and flop, flop, flip, flip, flop, flip, flip. I feel, I feel like uh, doing some Furious Five, Fan Five, flip, flop, flip it and flip. The flip flop. I don't care what you say. It was a flip flop. Like if y'all want to call Halo Five a flip flop because they reported only five million in sales as most of them reported. If that's a flip flop, then they, uh, Death Stranding is a flip flop, a flip it, hit a flip it, a flip flop, the flip it. Ain't no getting away from it. That thing fell off the charts. Like, wow, you know how I say, like, Wally Coyote off the cliff with the anvil. That thing dropped. So that's a flop. Horrible year in comparison to previous Sony years. That being said, again, what helped dilute the fact that, that, that made it so prominent that Sony had not hit one of its least stel stellar years in recent history, what smothered that? Phil's mouth. Look, Sony was dry. They weren't coming to E3. This state of plays were messes. 
But we forget all about that. You only can remember it now because MM2K is bringing it back up because Microsoft had its worst E3 ever. The Kumbaya was Sony. Even though every time Microsoft turned around, Sony was stepping on their necks. Yeah, we're signing a deal with Sony. We want Sony to be great. Meanwhile, y'all finally get gear shown in a good light with good advertisement, particularly at game, um, GamesCon. And what does Sony do? 30 seconds after that announcement. Oh, guess what? We just bought... Uh, <laughs> we just bought... Uh, uh, what company is that? That made Spider-Man. Insomniac. We just bought insomniac. <laughs> no, th there was no legitimate reason to make that announcement right then and there besides to step on Microsoft's neck. And it got so bad that Microsoft, I think they did a quick huddle. They probably locked Phil in the mop closet and they said, look, we're tired of this stuff. What are we going to do? They called a game industry. Business. They said, we're done. We're no longer um, looking at um, putting our games natively. On other devices. See you later. Then they unlock Phil and then he start doing some more rambling. And first and foremost, the biggest thing that Phil did with his mouth that helped calm the storm down for Sony in 2019 was that infamous Fortune Magazine interview. That was horrible. If that wasn't signs that Phil needs to take some 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 damn bit of drill and go lay somewhere. We need to take a bucket of bit of drill and go lay somewhere and shut the hell up. No other sign of that came from but that Fortune magazine interview. That was horrible. Turn my man that interview into an instant star. He got a Hollywood star walk of fame for that joint. It was horrible. But guess what? Never shuts up. He keeps going and going and going. He doesn't shut the hell up. Never. Never, ever, ever. Never shuts up. Never. And then we got more and more flip-flops that we talked about last episode with the, you know what I'm saying? No, it's all about the frames. No, it's all about the resolution. No, it's all about the frames again. Like Phil. I'm going to put it to you like this. 2019, despite the numbers that Sony tried to put up there, with the simple fact that Microsoft, I mean, that Sony went out there at uh, CES, I believe it was, even though CES ain't really a super big place where Sony does their reveals all the time. The fact that these mugs put up an empty website <laughs> put up a PlayStation 5 website and have nothing but the logo and 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 the lyrics to Hee Haw on there. <laughs> I don't know what the hell they got up there. They got some, they, they got some knock knock jokes up there <laughs> in the PS5 logo. The fact that all this stuff is happening in a vacuum and it doesn't appear that Sony is doing so bad. Like last week I had, or a few episodes ago I had mentioned how the X Series X was tracking. Just as fast as it was tracking. Guess what's tracking more than it now? PlayStation 5. PlayStation 5 is tracking way more than the X Series X now. And they've shown nothing. How does that happen? Because anticipation for the X Series X which is still, it's not dead by no stretch of the imagination, but even though it's still, uh, um, it, it's still something to, for, for Microsoft to be excited about, even though it's still, st still substantial, it's died down. It dropped, it dropped because Microsoft via Phil Spencer, keeps putting his foot in his mouth and creates bad headlines. He creates bad headlines for himself. If I'm an investor and I'm looking at, and I'm an insider and I know how games work and I've invested in, in Microsoft, I haven't invested in Sony. 
and I got reached like that, I'm calling Satya up immediately and telling Satya, tell this fool to sit the hell down. Tell him to sit his tight limbo shirt where it is down. Tell him to stop. Go play, go play that Series X. Go find out who leaked the Series X and showed the back of the uh, console with all the cat ferns and stuff on it. Do that. But don't talk about this thing no more. Don't talk about it until the reveal. Shut up. Now, that doesn't mean, I'm not saying Xbox should shut up. I'm saying Phil should shut up. Because Phil's game is to get out there. I don't know. You know, here's what I think happened. I would have played you a 2014 interview that a certain entity done with Phil Spencer, but I, I, I've separated myself from that. So I'm gonna leave that alone. That's, that's a whole nother, that's, that, that's a, for another podcast years down the road. <laughs> with that being said, when this entity sat with Phil, Phil was so charming. Phil said all the right things. And this was him new at, um, he was, this was directly after him taking over the reins and the things that Phil was saying then was I, I can, I could connect to that Phil, but I, this was my first time ever hearing him. I wasn't introduced to who Phil Spencer was till 2016, 2017. I didn't know the inner workings of who ran what and all that other stuff. All I knew was Peter Moore and Peter Moore's now going, oh man, I'm sad. And ever since then, things ain't never been the same. <laughs> With that being said, I never heard this interview. And when I listened to this interview, I said, wow, that guy, that guy gets it. I can see why people gravitated towards him. And I think as he was talking, he didn't sound like your typical suit. He didn't sound, he seemed very transparent and very charming. I think that he fell in love with that newfound fame. I think he fell in love with it. And, pe and, and people liked him. Even people that weren't fans of Xbox, they liked Phil. They may have, st oh, they may have dogged the platform, but they liked Phil. And I think he found, fell in love with that. And I think he's to the detriment of the perception and the product placement of his, of his, uh, uh, of, of the company. He can't be rid himself of, of, of that fame. After Fortune Magazine, I wouldn't have got depressed or anything like that. I would have done the self-reflection and then I would have said, you know what? For the betterment of this product, so people can see this in the best light, my enthusiasm or my desire for the people. I love you, Phil! My child would go in the backyard and do nothing but dig up worms and eat rocks. But after he plays Super Lucky's Tale, now he'll, now he'll eat a, a real food. I love you, Phil. He can't get past those obscure people. And because he can't get past that, he makes his, his name and his face, of he's the face of everything Xbox. And that shouldn't be the case. Xbox needs different curators of their message. I'm not saying Xbox should be quiet. Phil needs to be quiet. Like, for instance, if I'm that same investor, I'm on the phone with Satya, I'm like, Satya, I know you're learning this. I know you're a smart guy. And I know you don't understand the whole gaming culture. You're looking at the inner workings and how the cogs spin. But as someone that's embedded in the gaming culture and I'm invested in your company, I'm telling you what you should do now. This is elementary. Get Phil the hell away from the microphone until the Xbox Series X is released. Is revealed. I mean, once it's revealed, then he could do some spot sessions here and there. But until then, it's important for um, Xbox to get his message out. Get Matt Booty out there talking a little bit more. I know people had some controversial things to say about Matt Booty, but because of some of the things that he said, but he's just relaying the vision. Those things die quickly. And people only use what Matt Booty say to contrast with Phil says because Phil is always putting his foot in his mouth. Get Aaron out there. I've seen some great interviews with Aaron. Aaron 
knows when to shut the hell up. He don't go too deep in the woods. Get Matt out there. Get Aaron out there. Also, curate some mixer streams because that platform is in trouble. Like Ninja didn't do it. Curate some mixer streams with some of your designers, like within your Microsoft Studios, and have them talk about games and like little tidbits and show little tidbits of future projects. Like, prime example, that Ninja Theory video that was just put out there and released to the public, it, it, it turned some heads. But that should have been part of a mixer stream. Kill two birds with one stone. Get Ninja Theory out there in a stream talking about, you know, some of the stuff that they're working on at a very high level, not real detail. Then say, we got something for y'all. Then drop that video and then maybe on the side, play some Hellblade. Play some Hellblade. To get people all excited. Then you can get people, oh crap, I wouldn't even think about this Hellblade, but let me get them, let me go try out this Hellblade to see some of their work. Then you kill two birds with one stone. I mean, and if you don't believe that that'll be effective, look what happened when Phil got onto that one Twitter uh, stream where they were doing that charity event and he just slipped up or I don't, whatever he did, whether it was intentional or not, and mention that control was supposed to be coming to Game Pass. Look how much attention that drew and how many views that, that stream got after the fact. Nobody knew about it until that was released. Excuse me. If you do something like that, instead of just throwing it on YouTube, put it on YouTube after the fact. But create news, if you're going to create news, create the, curate the news and create it on your own content, control it, and drive directions to Mixer. Kill two birds with one stone. And then get interactive with the community. That's it. And keep Phil away from the damn bike. I don't get it. I don't get it. But I, if I'm an investor, I am making that call to Microsoft ASAP. Because Phil has to get away from the mic. They can use, they got other people there that have competency, that are better stewards of their message. And they can turn lemons into lemonade. Again, look at what happened when Phil mentioned that control, out of order, Phil mentioned that control was coming to game pass on that mixer stream. Nobody... I hate to say it, and again, I knew it was for a good cause, but nobody cared about that stream. Nobody cared. He did that. It was like watching the the, the, the it was like watching the Super Bowl. <laughs> Everybody flocked to that video. What? 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 So why not turn lemons into lemonade and make that a, put that in a controlled environment to garner news for your system so it's not trending down like it is now? PlayStation Five. It's trending up and they've showed you nothing. Series X, it still has substantial curiosity, but it's trending down. And anybody that creates YouTube videos, that hosts websites, that does tags, they know what I'm saying is true. Look at the value of PlayStation 5 tags opposed to Xbox tags. Trending down for Xbox, trending up for PlayStation, period. I go to the chat. Is my Nightbot cutting up? What did my Nightbot say? Uh, Pyromatic says, Phil talking don't bother me, laugh aloud. Phil doing his thing to me. See, that's, and that, I'm glad, Pyro, we got to get you on the show, man. Smart brother, whether there's dis uh, 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 disagreeing points of view, but very smart, and but, you, but what you said right there hit spot right on. Right on. If Phil didn't say anything else, would you still be buying an Xbox Series X? Do you need Phil to convince you anymore to buy an Xbox Series X? No, you don't. But we need Phil to start convincing the gaming community why to do that. And despite, if Phil goes out there and says something stupid or he says something smart, you're not, what you're going to do has not waned. You're buying an Xbox Series X. And there are a lot of people like you, but you're not in the majority. 
And that's okay because I'm not in the majority as far as my personal thoughts and tastes. So it's okay. It's not a slight towards you. It's just, you know, being self-aware. If I'm not in the majority and I know the people that are out in the majority think different than I do, then despite what my personal tastes are, Phil needs to cater to them. I'm already catered to. He's shown me enough if I'm fitting in your camp. I'm good. I'm Gucci. There's nothing he can do or say that's going to stop you, Dirk Griggity, my homie Graphic. Y'all are getting Series X's. Unless y'all see pictures of Phil throwing babies and erupting volcanoes, you're getting Series X's. The average consumer that listens to the IGNs or the whoever's that control the news because Microsoft ain't good at curating their own news. They are on a different stratosphere. If questions of parity are coming up, if the term flip-flop can be thrown out there and all that other stuff, then that diminishes the product placement for the Xbox. And all of that negative press, all of that negative press comes from one entity. It used to be split between him and Shannon. Shannon's no longer in a, a serious position of power anymore. Shannon Loftus. So all that negative press is coming via who? Phil. Let's try something new. Let's get Phil to shut the hell up. <laughs> and let's get other people to curate our message. Stay on key. Do it via controlled environments on streams and stuff like that. And let's just see how that goes. Because there's no reason why. There's no reason why that with nothing being shown. That PlayStation 5's uh, um, favorability is tracking up. They ain't got nothing but a website with a logo and knock knock jokes on it. There's no reason why I should be shooting up and Microsoft should be shooting down. There's no reason why the perception of 2019 is that Sony curb stomped Microsoft even further when we, we just looked at the numbers. That's not true. So very good point. I'm glad you brought that up, but I hear that all the time from my Xbox brethren, and I, and I tell them all the time, y'all got to understand it's bigger than y'all. Just like I got to understand it's bigger than me when it comes to certain things. As long as they keep what retains me, I'm cool. Do what you got to do. Do what you got to do to keep the lights on. Just don't make it disrupt what I like. And he's not disrupting what you like by being quiet. That's how we got to look at things. But great question, great, I mean, great comment. And he also says, I don't need Phil to convince me at all. I'm a little different. I agree, he needs to put the box with a clear, consistent message. To his message has been, to me, his message has been consistent with nuances. The nuances cause people to misinterpret him, which hurts Xbox message, exactly. So the nuances need to be, no, Phil, just, Phil is full of nuances now. He just needs to be quiet, that's all. He still gets a paycheck. You still get your Xbox Series X. We just, we just get some of the less, we get less of the negative press because of it. Give it a try, Microsoft. Phil, get over yourself, baby. You're still getting a paycheck, baby. When you get some of them calls from GameSpot, hey, Phil, what you think? Of, hang up the phone. Yeah, I'm going to send Matt out next Tuesday to talk to you guys about that. You practice with Matt what the message is going to be. Hey, Matt, don't go in this area. Don't go in that area. Y'all work it out with whoever. Send Matt out there. Send Aaron out to somewhere. If 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 game if, if giant bomb calls the following day, y'all send I'll send Aaron out there. You know what I'm saying? That's how you got to do this. Uh, Dig sample beat says stop hashtag stop feel now. <laughs> yeah, he's 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 killing the vibe, man. He's killing the vibe. All right, so also. If y'all want to support the show, uh, you could drop something in the loot chat. I will read your message. Your message will pop up a lot sooner. It'll be a lot more visible to me. Um, either that or dropping bits, you know, anything. But if you want to, if you want to do a free of charge, you can support the platform free of charge um, via the free messaging app, the loots app. The link pops up every now and again by my nightbot. All right. 
Let's move on, y'all. Let's move on. Um, well, no, one thing I wanted to address is um, there's this rumor going around that Microsoft um, actually performed better percentage-wise than Sony in certain areas. And I wouldn't go that, even though I would say that their dip from last uh, quarter to this quarter was le is less prominent as Sony. That percentage wise, I don't think they perform better. People are taking note of, let me go here. Let me close this out. And I know that's too small. Y'all can't see that. So let me bump that up. Uh, this is via VG charts. And I know we don't listen to them for, for notes, but these are direct quotes from viable sources that they're, they're, they're citing here. Microsoft announced that their overall gaming revenue decreased 21% year over year, while Xbox content and services revenue also decreased by 11%. So the content and services revenue is within the overall gaming revenue. So a portion of the gaming revenue, even though it decreased the overall 21%, 11% of that was, 11% um, um, of that was, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Was just strictly games and, and, and you know, games and, and DLC and stuff like that and services. Now, with that being said, People are looking at that 11% that just relates to software and services and they're equating it, I believe, incorrectly to this from Sony. The third quarter revenue at PlayStation division was down 20%. And the reason why they're doing that is because Sony's, uh, because of the name, Microsoft calls the their their software services alone games and network services, something like that. Sony does the same thing, but they're two totally different litmuses. Xbox's games and network services, for if I'm reading this right, it only includes games and network services. It doesn't include hardware. Sony's does. As you look here, they break it down. Decreases in PlayStation 4, hardware unit sales. They describe it right here. So because they describe it right here, it's part of their games and network services. So that's everything altogether. They looked at, if you segment it out, if you segment the part out, their hardware alone went down 25%. But whatever their, their software services was, I don't know. I don't know. The software may have been 10%. Who knows? I don't know what the percentages was. It could have been 6%. But people are erroneously looking at what Microsoft did with software and they're bumping it up against what Sony did for everything altogether and making a false equivalency. And y'all got it. That's why y'all got to read. Y'all got to do the due diligence. Now, again, if somebody has Sony's numbers for just software and services alone, that'd be great. But going off the games and network services segment, the software and services didn't go down 20%. That was everything together, including hardware that went down 20%. So you guys got to understand what's going on here with, you can't take the same, everything isn't synonymous. All I did was clicked on the link, looked at the chart, went down to page nine, and just did a little bit of reading. It doesn't hurt to do some due diligence. So I just wanted to clear that out. Uh, Dig Sample B says, knowledge is power. Absolutely. But, I, but we live in a world where people want to go click, click, boom. They just want to, and just send something off and not do any due diligence behind it. Said so Indians don't let 
the facts rule. <laughs> hey, I feel you, brother. Idiots don't let the facts rule a good argument, though. Hey, yo, that's what it is. That's why I I, I, look, I talk to people behind the scenes. And people say, MM2K, why are you in this console war muck? Because y'all the unsuspecting gamer that listen to the tantalizing sounding voices. Yes, the ones that speak like this and can talk in clear diction and say all these other fancy things. Y'all listening to us, y'all make the false equivalency, talk about false equivalency, y'all make the false equivalency of thinking that we know what the hell we're talking about. And I'm here to tell you, somebody at, that's been a YouTuber for two years, the vast majority of these YouTubers out here don't know what the hell they're talking about. They just don't. They don't do due diligence. I've had to feed my family off of it. I'm not trying to get personal, not to do it. To, I've had to feed my family off of doing due diligence. And if I fell off of one thing and threw off all my statistics that I provided to my superiors, that was my ass. So that's why I, 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 I approach this a little bit differently from your average YouTuber. They're here to make tantalizing arguments. I'm here to make sure that everybody, including myself, is informed. So before I went live, I had to look, I, I looked through these stats. I just looked to the part that was relevant. And I said, oh, I think we got an issue here. I threw it out there to my homie, Pete Rock. I don't know what Pete Rock said because I love bouncing numbers against him because he's a numbers guy too. And I'll check that later. But that's what I'm saying. People are making, I, I heard the false equivalent being made uh, throughout the week. And I'm like, no, no, y'all are looking at this wrong. Games and Network for Microsoft is totally different from Games and Network for PlayStation. If you want to just look at software side, it appears that PlayStation, well, it has to be, right? If you look at the mathematical uh, uh, probability of this, that it's got to be less than 20%. If hardware was at 25% and the combination of hardware and services bumped everything down to 20%, I would imagine that services is probably 15, maybe even single digits. But we just got to get those numbers. That's all. But people just got to do due diligence. That's all. Yo, my, uh, Cold Blood Sensei, what's going on? You late to the party, brother. You late, but that's okay. All right. So I got that out of the way. Talked about the numbers. Now we're going to get on to the meat and potatoes of today's show, which is your homeboy, Rod Ferguson. He's gone, he gone, gone. <laughs> He's gone. All right. Here we go. He said Pete Rock equals SP 1200 King. Yeah, the Pete Rock was the homie, man. I love Pete Rock's music. And then I was watching, uh, not to get too off track, but I was watching this series on hip hop on, on, on uh, Netflix where they talked about Jay Dilla. Um, and I, I was a big fan of his music, but I didn't understand uh, where his origins were. Stuff, very powerful stuff. I forgot the name of it, but it's, it's a show on hip hop. And it shows that the music was beyond gangster rap and all other stuff. It shows, you know, a lot of the poetic side to a lot of a lot of stuff that um, people just assume went down a certain way. So I, I recommend the show, but that's here in order. I don't want to get off the topic. I want to kick Microsoft's ribs in right now. No, I'm just joking. All right, tweet from Rod Ferguson starting in March of 2020. I will join Blizzard to oversee Diablo franchise. Leaving is bittersweet as I love our Gears family, the fans, and everyone at the Coalition and Xbox. Thank you. It's been an honor and a privilege to work with you all. So, and he also follows up with, I began working on Gears over 15 years ago, and since then it has been a joy in my life, but now it's time for a new adventure. I love Gears, and, and it's in great hands, the Coalition, and the Coalition can't wait for everyone to play Gears Tactics on April 28th. That was a little bit of surprising news last night. Shocked the hell out of me. Shocked the hell out of me. You know what I'm saying? But um, very interesting none, nonetheless. Um, here's the thing, y'all. Let's talk about it. Another high profile person leaves Xbox. And I've seen the tweets. I've seen them. People don't make a big deal out of Yoshida 
getting bumped to the basement, Sean Layton getting Jazzy Jeffed off the porch and all this other stuff. No. We made a big deal out of it. We talked about it. Things is changing. But things always change at, at Sony. We're, we're not focused on that so much because here's the thing. Sony always acts like a, uh, a unilateral figure. It's not about the individual contributions. Don't believe me? Jack Trenton told y'all that himself in that interview with Hip Hop Gamer, the infamous interview. So Sony will always discharge cogs and put in new ones where they see fit. They don't hang around uh, to keep people around like Phil does. They don't do that. Sony is all about Sony. And at any given moment, if they feel like that you're not the best part for their future endeavors, bye bye But it's very clear and very evident that Phil was using the rest of this generation during his tenure as a rebuilding phase for the new Xbox, the Xbox under his vision, the family friendly, we going to run in the fields and, and, and stroke the unicorns and, 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 and eat the grass off the earths. You know what I'm saying? That type of Xbox with, with a little sprinkle of some hardcore stuff here and there. Um, and that Xbox is going to be bigger than ever. So upon that, upon the fact that Xbox financially is finally in the black, finally in the black, it's finally making money. Post uh, trying to take over your living room phase, they're, they're, they're finally making money. That the Series X is going to be the biggest, baddest Xbox ever. That Halo Infinite it's going to be the most important game to the future. And you got all these X, but you're going to reach 7 billion gamers. So if you're successful, you got a lot of, you, you got a lot of potential money, a lot of gold watches, a lot of, you know, a lot, a lot of, a lot of fancy fish eating and lobster tails to be broken and served among. You got a lot of potential there. And for, in, in, in the advent of that, you not only had, Mike willingly leave. But now you got Rod Ferguson, the, the face of your biggest franchise just on the heels of it releasing. And this is a games as a service game. So in the one of the biggest transitions of your of the history, where everything is so great and everybody's loving and they're playing hacky sack, and this is gonna be the biggest time to be part of Xbox ever. You have staples leaving and they're willingly leaving. Why? You got to ask yourself, why? Dr. Wass 85 said, Phil's vision of Xbox just means we get shafted out of consistently great gaming experiences. The higher ups will love him making bank with minimum effort. And also, we got one from Cold Blood Sensei. He says, here's a story. <laughs> Cold Blood. <laughs> Hold on, we're going to do a quick intervention. So me and Cold Blood on the last episode of NRO Podcast, we were talking about my, my brother Pope's stuff. And if y'all follow uh, our content from Next Year 720's channel, Brother Post Up is a follow broadband bully brother and say that fast five times. Like myself, we do broadband bullies. Go to broadbandbullies.com, you know, to, to see the, the, the whole gamut of our material. Great website. You know what I'm saying? So definitely join us there. That being said, uh, there was a story that Z was telling about post up saying that somebody just gave him a car and uh, the brakes went out on the car uh, after the person just gave it to him. No, no money needed. No money down. They just just a random person gave him a car and the brakes went out and, and his, his life was on the line. So his body left his I mean, his soul left his body. We were all joking about that. So here's the story because we were trying to figure out what were the details. Post got a car from, <laughs> from a Caucasian woman. He stopped at a cross section. There was a tr truck he somehow drove. Part two coming. <laughs> Y'all can follow next year. Hey, look. If you're not of the faint of heart and you love wild and zany, entertaining content, more entertaining than anything that you ever get here, look for next gen 720 on YouTube and follow his channel. 
And <laughs> for craps and giggles, ask him the story about post up in the I rock. <laughs> hey, cold blood, you ain't right, man. But y'all got to Y'all probably say, well, what is it? The person being Caucasian got to do with it. You, you got to hear the whole story. We're, we're not, you know, we're not trying to be funny like that or whatever. You just got to hear the whole story and then, it'll, and then you'll understand, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, definitely follow next year's seven twenties channel. <laughs> Ah, okay, with that being said, all right. So, um, why is he leaving? Why would Phil and Mike leave? Now, I get, people were saying, Mike, it was Mike's dream job. You know? So, yeah, we're, we're going to tackle that. But let's look at everything in totality. Again, we talked about PlayStation when I, you know I was there. You know me with the memes. Sean Layton got Jazzy Jeff off the porch. Things are changing. We talked about it. But it's very clear that Phil wanted specific people to be there and to be lingering at the company because he was comfortable with them. He liked the 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 coffee shop uh, um, environment that he created there at Xbox. He loved it. He didn't want those people to go. Even Shannon Loth is after she was calling people fat bees on the internet and stuff. Call, you know what I'm saying? And went wild. Yeah, she got bumped down, but they'll probably bump her back up later. He loves his people. And loyalty is key to him. And these ain't people that they're getting rid of. These are people that are leaving. So with that being said, Let's look at everything in totality. You have two Halo people that were poached on the heels of the biggest Halo game to date. Not saying it's the best, but there's so much riding on this Halo Infinite. So much, more than ever before. I'll, I'll, I'll say this, it's the... It may be second, you could argue it's the second biggest because the first one put first person shooters and stuff it changed the game but this one speaks to the viability of a company because if they can't get halo infinite to have wide-reaching ramifications with the gaming community that's going to cause a problem for xbox that's going to cause a real problem for xbox so on the heels of that you got major halo people that's like that didn't say oh i want to be a part of this They went on to do this this game called Scavenger, and I'm not going to talk too much about it because it's under I'm under NDA. I am part of the, the beta testing and the alpha test. I, well, is it, I think it's alpha. It's an alpha right now. But you look at that game, and you look at what Halo's presenting. I I don't know. <laughs> it's like leaving a five star restaurant to become a deep fry handler at Arby's. And I get that they may have given you a nice raise. I don't know how significant, I don't understand how significant the raise could be. I mean, this company, I don't think they have deep pockets. Maybe they do. But you're talking about finishing up one of the biggest games, one of the most important games in gaming history. And you leave that, like I said, you leave a five-star restaurant, the excitement there to become a deep fry cook. Err, I don't know. And you got Mike rolling. Again, he said Blizzard was his was his dream job. But the follow-up to him leaving, he dogged X, he drug Xbox boy. He drugged the mugs through the mud and he still takes little snippets, snippets here and there. It ain't as bad as it was, but he still takes a little jazz. But he drug Xbox. And then the same person that drug that the drug Xbox is able to go to one of the most reliable people that Phil Spencer had. It seemed like that him and Phil had a great relationship, but he was able to go to Rod Ferguson, head of one of the biggest franchises uh, of current Xbox. You know what I'm saying? One of the the biggest minds that helped you know, make this thing as steady games as a service to help improve it 
you know, because right now, let's be honest, even though at an initial launch, it appears that it did do a lot for Game Pass and it didn't do horrible. But it ain't other best played games right now. It's not even top 20. It's not too far ahead of Fallout 76. <laughs> and Fallout 76 is about to get a big boost in April because they're coming out with the Wastelanders DLC. And you're going to be able to finally get NPCs. So you know your boy MM2K is just chomping at the bit to, to see when Fallout 76 goes above gears. On Xbox Most Play, you know, I'm chomping at the bit. <laughs> so it's it would be very important to keep gears in a higher light you know because it's a games as a service you put a lot of money into this game most of it was interacted with via game pass you know what i'm saying you cannibalize quote unquote sales to put it on this platform so the platform could grow because this is this is your kit and caboodle so the viability of it it growing in player base is is essential right and a guy that's very talented that can help make that come to fruition. He doesn't want to see that happen. He don't want. He don't want to carry the torch into what's going to be the biggest air for Microsoft. He's, he 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 bowed out and he left courtesy of being poached by the guy that just drug Microsoft through the dirt. Give me a second. Think about that. So on the heels of that one, got to ask. Is everything great at Microsoft? As people want you to believe? I mean, we're painted this picture that everybody's just sitting there smiling and they're happy and they're excited and, and enthusiastic. But you had two developers in a high position for your biggest game to date. They left to go make this game <laughs> I'll just leave it at that I'm under NDA they go make this game you have somebody that was a staple in ushering in this big the biggest generation of Xbox period he was in he was in charge of the console in a lot of ways he up and left and now you got somebody who was the head of the studio well, one of your best studios, if it, I'm not arguably your most accomplished and your best studio at the moment. Who doesn't want to usher, usher in that new era as well and doesn't want to curate and see his baby that he put a lot of effort into. You could tell by the way he talked about he see his baby flourish and grow as Xbox needs to. He goes and rolls with the person that just drugged him through the dirt. And I get money is involved. But that says a lot. So if somebody comes to me and says, MM2K, you got Fortune 500 company experience. I see you're making X amount of money, but we're willing to give you 20 to 30% more if you come roll with us. And I look at that company and I'm like, do I really roll with you guys? Because you're, because we're going, we're about to get into something. Let's just say the company I'm with is about to get into something big and I'm enjoying it and I'm happy and I'm already making good money. Do I say, you know what? Let me see this project through. And then if things start to sour, then I'll join you. Or do I go, if it's about, if it's just about the money, do I go back to Phil and say, Phil? They just gave me a deal for extra 20. What you? Because I know Phil, look, Phil got the pocketbooks open. Phil could have made it happen. Phil could have made it happen. We're talking about not just, not just a individual game studio or publisher. We're talking about a major game console company that's ushering in this big fantastical era. I'm not leaving that. Unless the prospects of it don't look so great. Because these are big major people. They have leverage. Maybe not Mike so much because what Mike was probably looking for was closer to what Phil was making. But I think a lot of it was frustration related. 
as you can see in the tweets. But Rod, come on, man. Rod could have went back and said, this is what they're giving me. Rod, I need you. Even though I got my in inclinations about Phil, and Phil's not a, Rod, I need you. This is, we're ushering a big moment, baby. Even if I can't match them 100%, I'll give you 20%. And on the advent of us doing well with this, that, and the other, I'll give you another 10%, man. Let me throw in an extra week of vacation pay for you. Something, you know. I got you. Look, I know how this works, man. I know how this works. You can't tell me how this Y'all may be ignorant to it, but I know how this works. We've had plenty of talent. Where we're like, yo, we could be in the middle of something. We were in the middle of presentations with big companies. Hey, yo, MM2K, come here for a second. Yo, stop, 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 stop. I had to go to my assistant. Hey, yo, can you pick over for me? You know what I'm saying? Take over the slide six through 13. I'll be back. Come on, people. What's going on? So-and-so's trying to bounce. What? So-and-so. Yeah, man. I called HR. I got HR on the phone. I know the great level cap for this position is this, but we're trying to throw in an extra such and such 10,000 or whatever. Hey, yo, let's go. We got to strategize right now because they gave us an end date of such and such and we're trying to we're we're trying to match counteract whatever entity gave them this and we're tr we're trying we got to retain them and if the person is truly happy where they're at it's truly a money thing i ain't have to match them a dollar by dollar or we didn't have to match them dollar by dollar we just we had to give them a little bit more comfortability, a little bit more flexibility, and give them a nice a hefty chunk chunk of change. But they're already happy, so they're willing to take those extra accommodations, even though it's not a dollar for dollar match on what they were offered there. And we've been able to retain them. That's how it works. If you're happy, there's ways to keep you. If you're happy and we're happy with you, there's ways to keep you at this level. It's not like Mike left. And even though Mike is a little bit more questionable, it's not like Mike left to become CEO. It's not like the people that was developing for Halo left and headed a studio. It's not like Rod left and is now senior VP or vice president. You know, no, he's just heading up Diablo. Just like he was heading up gears. Whatever his compensation could have been matching. This is the biggest company in the world next to Google. And the purse strings are open. If they was happy, something could have happened. And the fact that he was poached tells a lot. Especially when it's happening right after Gears is releasing. I know at least what in September, but still, this is a games as a service, and y'all about to usher in a new era. They need the financial viability and the gamer uh based viability of this game to rise to help usher in that new era. To be a good transition from this era to the next one. For that hardcore gaming crowd. Look, y'all, we can't we can't be void of facts here. We can't be void of facts. The homie Cold Blood Sensei says, <laughs> so he drives a truck that wasn't moving, and then the truck drove at the same time. Uh oh. So he drives a truck that wasn't moving, and the truck drove at the same time as him, and the brakes didn't work, and he part three coming. He's still talking about brother post up, but let me go back to to, to the chat. Uh. Dr. Wasp85 says, I hope Halo Infinite is great. I miss sweating on one, on one, two, or three. Absolutely. Uh, Cold Blood says, they says, yeah, nothing new from Gears 4. That's why. My opinion on Rob Ferguson as a dev. Um, he's, he's talent. He can give you solid games. He can give you solid games. I mean, I'm not like, I'm not like a Rod Ferguson, you know, fanboy, but he can give you solid games. Um, and he and he knows what he's doing. Like for instance, 
I didn't like Halo. I mean, I didn't like Bioshock Infinite, but in, in hearing from Ken Levine and seeing him at the end of that game, I can understand how much of a development hell that game was. And he was able to string something together that would be appealing to, to a mass variety of people. I think the, the, the split on Halo, I mean, of Bioshock Infinite is a lot bigger than people realize. Like, I think it's 60 40. I think 60% of the consumers that got it love the game. I think 40% hated it. And I think that's what spawned GameSpot to go back out and do a second review of the game, where I think they originally gave Halo Infinite a nine or something like that, where the second reviewer gave it a five. And I was directly with them because it's it was a love or hate thing. And I think we were starting to see the advent of games that just give you what you were familiar with telling you a cinematic story behind it, behind it and just making sure there weren't a lot of bugs. I think we started to see the advent of those type of games getting more credit than they deserve. Bioshock infinite in no way, shape, form or fashion in the story, in a loopy storytelling in the gameplay interaction in the level design, nothing about it is superior to one, not even two. It's not even on the same level. But people loved it. So I don't want, even though I'm not, you know, I'm not like a biggest, the biggest fan of his. I don't mind him either. But my thoughts on Rod Ferguson is that he's a solid staff. And he knows how to make things that work. I'll put it like that. Um... Dr. Wasp85 says, my problem with Bioshock Infinite was even though it was a good game, it, it was not what they showed us initially. Yeah, I, I mean, I love the tactical sense of Bioshock 1 and Bioshock 2, even though Bioshock 1 by far is my favorite. 2 in the middle, 2 was just not paced right. If 2 was paced better, that would have been my favorite one because this the strategic sense of Bioshock 2 was like nothing I've ever seen in a game. It really made you think like you were in a football huddle and like, hold on. All right, man. Okay, so let's run play ZX6. Like, you go in the room and you see a whole bunch of stuff happening. And you're like, oh, yeah, I'm not built for this. Like, we got to redo. We got to strategize and realize. And I love that about that game. So the, strat the strategic sense and the challenge of 1 and 2 far outpass what was being presented in, in Infinite. I just did not like Infinite at all. Didn't challenge me. Just was taking me through some loopy storyline about alternative universe. I just didn't like it. I didn't like it. And it, yeah, I didn't like I didn't like the gameplay. I didn't like the level design. There's nothing about Bioshock Infinite that I liked besides playing it at 60 frames per second <laughs> on PC. That's it. So... Um, is it a big loss? It, it's not only a, a loss because look, let's be honest. Xbox studios just ain't that great now. They're just not that great. So even though I may not be the biggest fan, you're talking about the most comp, one of the most competent minds there if, if, as far as development is concerned. I mean, gears right now, gears five is Xbox's best franchise. As far as product is concerned, I'm not talking, you know, I, I get that state, uh, um, uh, 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 Sea of Thieves is popular, maybe is more popular than, 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 way more popular than Gears, but I'm talking about as far as just broad appeal, AAA quality, like Gears 5 was their best game that they released this year. And now he's gone. That mind that created that is gone. Not this year, I'm sorry, this generation. Now he's gone. So, yeah, not not too grand, my friend, not too grand. But what we did notice is that we noticed that Rod is after, you know, Rod is gone or in, in the lieu of Rod being gone, we're seeing Phil lean heavy on um, the initiative. And th th they have talent there. They have talent. So hopefully they, they've been teasing the game. Like, I think it's perfect dark. Uh, 
hopefully that's the game and, and they can, you know, they could give it a reboot like how they did with uh, Tomb Raider. I hope there's a lot more action in it, though. You know what I'm saying? I, I want an action. I want action. Okay. One action. Um, but ultimately, I just think that they need new blood and bold thinkers. You know, more people like the guy that pushed Phil to release the Series X at the Video Game Awards. You need people to think like that. I'm tired of this lily nilly thinking and I'm good because I can keep the people at bay right now. The the, the 50 million people, maybe the the last place, <laughs> the, the you know, the the consumers that got my product at last place. I, I make them happy. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing everything right. No, no. Like we need bold thinkers like that. Cause that guy gets it. He needs a raise. All right. So those are my thoughts on that. Uh, Cold blood sensei rod did his job and said, F you, Microsoft, and dogs, shit, Xbox. <laughs> yeah, brother. I Look, man, it's, it's rough. It's going to be rough for Microsoft. Even if the initiative does do dark, uh, perfect dark, that maybe 2022, 2023, we see it. Like, what are we getting prior to that? You know, I'm more, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm more interested in the second party deals that Xbox has. I want to see these second party deals. If these second party deals are promising, then, 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 you know, then that don't mean a lot for the platform. All right. So with that, I'm going to get into the last segment before I open up phone lines. Um, a lot of people are upset about, games being pushed back, including your boy. And I had games being pushed back, shake up my whole gaming aspect for 2020. Like I was solely dependent upon cyberpunk 2077 for a lot of my gaming. And I was just looking for games to hold me over until then. Now that that's been pushed back, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. Um, but there's been some decent games that, have been revitalized. And I want to show you a trailer to one game that um, looks good, okay? So here's my list of games that I think people should look back into while they're waiting for certain games to come out. And one in particular that is going to be new that could help, you know, stifle the, the staleness that we're going to run into because of all these pushbacks. Uh, first and foremost, Star Wars Battlefront 2. I heard that that's been revitalized and that's a hell of a game. And the gaming community did its job and curb stomped um, a lot of the, the, the gross microtransactions that they were doing, you know, so that's good. Um, another game is Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Ghost Recon Breakpoint, I know it wasn't a, a, the favorite game of a lot of people and it got a lot of ire. I'm in the community because it's lack of diversity as far as missions were concerned, but I see where they've already fixed that. I've gotten back. I was playing a lot, solely a lot of Borderlands three, <laughs> Borderlands three and some dark siders on, uh, on, on stadia. And, um, by me playing into ghost recon Breakpoint because I was testing how it worked on the video. I noticed that they redid a lot of the prior missions to make them more action based. So I'm like, wow, that's cool. And they're doing a bunch of different things. They got this Terminator event. I was watching um, a Stadia streamer do that. And uh, it looks like they're really working on enhancing that game. So, you know, people may actually want to give it a try. See if they can get it at a bargain. You know, get it used or something like that. And, and give that game a try. You know, it's, it's even before all this, it was a solid game. I will admit that it may have not been for everybody uh, for the longevity-wise because the way that missions were... It was basically the same thing over and over again, taking over an area, finding, talking to somebody, doing, you know, rinse and repeat. Um, and it kind of made it mundane. However, everything else about it was fantastic. It looks like now that they're fixing that aspect of the missions. Um, another one, Fallout 76. April 7th, Fallout 76 is getting a Wastelanders edition, which is bringing NPCs to the game. So 
to me, hey, look, here's the deal. I play Fallout because I love journeying, I love looting, and I love building up my character with all types of crazy, zany shit, right? Um, NPCs were the least things I cared about because in the way that they did it in Fallout 76, instead of you talking to Winifred or Bobby D, you just, you interacted with a terminal. You interacted with a terminal, the terminal had stuff, of, and you made choices based on that. Or instead of you, uh, let's just say there was a, uh, a, a, a mutant, with the big mutants around and the previous fallout games, if the big mutant was around and you had a choice of whether to attack the mutant and get into a fight with him and steal his gear or talk to the mutant. What they do right now is the mutant will still be there. It's just, there's no dialogue tree. It's just that, you know what I'm saying? You either shoot the mutant or you don't, you know what I'm saying? And so it cut out a lot of the fat for me and got straight to the nitty gritty, which was the gameplay. I get that people like dialogue trees and the simple fact that people love uh, um, the outer worlds. They're like, this is what Fallout should have been. Oh, hell no, <laughs> I'm sorry. That is dialogue tree after dialogue tree after dialogue tree. And at the end of it, you might get a popsicle, but you just have dialogue trees just for the sake. I love Obsidian, but I hate their, their, their dialogue open world games. I hate them. I hated Fallout New Vegas because of that. The loopy decisions and then the, the, the lack of reward. They don't focus enough on reward. Like if I'm going through all these missions and I'm talking to all these people, it means nothing to me if at the end of the day, I'm just getting a, a, a I'm just getting a Sherbert. <laughs> you know, I'm getting a scoop of Sherbert at the end of it. So, Fallout 76, though, is adding the NPCs. Y'all finally can enjoy that. It, 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 to me, it's a very solid game. Very solid. It, you know, just like every Fallout game, and I predict that over the next few years, it's going to reach ESO levels. It is. It just is. 90% of the ire and the hate for Fallout came from people that didn't even experience the Fallout 76 game. If they would have played it, they would have said, okay, a lot of this whoop to do is about nothing. Um, Division Two. Division Two is coming out with. I think they announced earlier, per what I read from uh, Daniel Ahmad, they're coming out with Episode Three. It's coming out with some new stuff. I'm hearing that the stuff that they have in Episode Two is really good. So definitely check that game out. My favorite right now is Borderlands Three. They're coming out with more stuff in this 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 Moxie event and the Red Chest Box event. Great game. Definitely check it out. And last but not least, I want to show y'all this game hold on one second because uh doom three well, not doom three what the hell doom eternal y'all can't hear that oh let me fix this Let's do it.
So I thought that looked awesome. Uh, I'm not the biggest Doom fan. I will be the first to admit that. But, you know, in lieu of us not seeing a lot of games <laughs> coming this our way this year, it's one I'm going to be looking forward to. So um, those are my suggestions. My suggestions, again, are take a look at Star Wars Battlefront if you abandoned it amongst the microtransactions mess. It's a good game. Ghost Recon Breakpoint's a great um, game. It was good um, at the start, and then they're making some changes in the right direction. Fallout 76. I say give it a try now, but come April 7th, they're bringing NPCs to the game. The Division 2, Borderlands 3, of course, and then Doom. Doom Eternal. Doom Eternal is going to be a new game. Um, and Doom is coming out in March, I believe. So definitely check that out. Okay, with that being said, I now want to open it up to the phone lines. If you want to call in, you can call in via 724-739-3612. I'm going to put that in right here. Call in. Give us a call. And if you have any questions, I will take them live on air and we'll answer them. Mm -mm. Okay. I got. Okay. This thing doesn't want to work. That's weird. Oh, hold on. What? What in the Sam hell is going on here? I want to work. But my my menu bar ain't working. That's weird. <sighs> Hold on. Give me one second, guys. Gotta love Windows. You gotta love Windows. Okay, so apparently cannot pull up Skype. So we can do, hold on, give me a second, I might be, here we go. There we go, okay. That was weird. Okay, there we go. Call phone lines, again, seven. Two four seven three nine thirty six twelve, um, and we can discuss whatever you want to. But again, let me go to the chat. Uh, Cold Blood Sensei says, uh, "Battle Toads," and then he says, "Play Final Fantasy VII Remake, please." Oh, you know what? No, that got pushed back, bro. I'm talking about the first half of uh oh no 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 you're right my apologies yeah that yeah you can do that yeah Final Fantasy VII can be uh played I'm sorry that's a, a, a honorable mention thanks to Cold Blood Sensei I forgot about that one so yeah Final Fantasy and that looks dope so definitely pick that up uh he said no seventy six can burn in development hell where it came from. <laughs> Uh, he said, and then uh, Dr. Wasp says 76 killed off the Fallout IP for millions of people. And you know what? I think that's a good thing. I'm happy that happened because here's what happened. By them, look, to me, Fallout 4 and Fallout New Vegas were reaches for the casual gamer. Like the companion, that was okay. But for the companion and a lot of this dialogue-based stuff that they tried to pick up from Fallout New Vegas and 4, and all Fallout 4 is, is Fallout 3 with Minecraft elements, slightly reskinned. Because you have all of those working in, in, in interloop with each other, I'm that brought on a lot of casual people that I'm happy, and I hate to say this, that I'm happy are gone. Because now... Bethesda no longer has to do the, the tug of war of do we satisfy our hardcore people that factor in gameplay more than anything or the people that just want this stuff on the periphery. And I'd rather them, if it's got to be a choice, I'd rather them cater to me. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I did not like the direction that Fallout was going into. It was more about the fluff stuff, the dialogues and the loopy conversations like me. 
I thought Fallout 4 was so bad, that was the only Fallout I didn't finish. I didn't fall. I didn't finish that Fallout. I was so angry with the direction they were taking that game and the, the, the more casual base that it was becoming. And I, I didn't fall, finish Fallout 4. I don't like it. I don't like it. So I'm happy about that. I may sound weird, but I'm actually happy about that. Um, Cold Blood Sensei says 4 was the sign that they were going in the wrong direction already. Yeah. Yep. I agree. I agree. I agree with that. But Fallout 76, it takes on all that fluff, all the quote unquote wrong direction that they were going into. And, and, and what it does is it focuses on the straight gameplay and travel. I, I like it. I like it. That's what I said. I gave it a seven and a half. Um, quality, the reason why I didn't give it like anything higher was the quality of life wasn't good. Like it, it didn't look great. It didn't look better. And then for, for y'all to charge us full $60 for this, like it should have looked better than that. And there was just, there, there are some things that it, that they could have done to add to add a little bit more flavor to the game that they didn't do. But I, I still think it's a solid game. I like it. All right. But with that said, um, I don't think we're getting any phone calls in. Anybody? All right. We're going to read Cold Blood Sensei's part three of the story. He said he was feeling the presence of a higher being than himself, and he survived the crash with the engine almost in his cockpit. <laughs> I, I tell y'all again go join next gen 720's channel and to and, and just ask him about it hilarious i i host his channel on on this twitch channel so yep all right if we're not going to get any phone calls that's cool that's fine um on to next time and i want to thank everybody for joining us for this uh episode of nro number 12 baby Number 12, we've been doing it back to back to back weeks. Um, give me a little bit, y'all, and I'll come back with a stream from two to four. Um, we'll wrap out the day here with the stream. So just give me a few moments. Uh, I think I'm going to do some Ghost Recon Breakpoint, and I might do it via NVIDIA. Yeah. Just give y'all a little taste of what that NVIDIA Geoforce is like. But with that said, I want to thank everybody coming through. Uh, Cold Blood Sensei, Dr. Wasp85. Uh, who else we got here? We got um, Dig Sample Beats. Big up to Dig Sample Beats. I'm um, in the homie Pluromatics. Uh, thank you very much for coming through. Who else we have in here? We ha we ha we also had the homie Wholesale come in here. I appreciate all of y'all. Thank you so much. And with that, y'all all have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.